with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all, without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Now remember, remember you can get my audiobook free. My audiobook free, just enter your email at effortlessenglish.com. That's my book website, effortlessenglish.com. Enter your email there, middle of the page, and you get my audiobook, my whole audiobook for free. Again, that's effortless English, just effortless English, my book website enter your email there, get my full audiobook for free. It's a lot of extra listening. You'll learn the whole Effortless English system. The incredible key to success in life, in anything in life, this is connected to yesterday's show. You want to speak fluently faster. You want to start and succeed with your own business, perhaps, or maybe as a freelancer. You want to be rich, maybe. You want to be happier. You want to achieve your big goals, your big dreams in life. You want to overcome fear. A long time ago, I joined a public speaking course. It was called the Dale Carnegie course. The Dale Carnegie public speaking course. Dale Carnegie. Very good course, by the way. They still have them. I remember my first day of the Dale Carnegie course. They brought us to the front of the class and we just had one job on the first day. Just introduce ourselves, say our name, Say something about ourselves. A short introduction, less than a minute to speak to the class. So first day of this public speaking course. I was so nervous. I, I remember my hands shaking. My hands were shaking. I could not control them. I could not stop my hands from shaking. And uh, as my time to speak got closer, I remember my neck, my neck and my throat getting kind of tighter and tighter and tighter. So when it was my time just to say my name and introduce myself, my throat was so tight, my hands were shaking that I had a very hard time just speaking for, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds. Hi, my name is AJ, but my voice sounded very strange. You know, I'm... You know, I'm from Athens, Georgia, and, uh, and, I, and my, my brain wouldn't work. I couldn't think well. I couldn't think clearly about what to say. It was terrible. Terrible. So, so much fear and nervousness. And I sat down and, you know, of course, I didn't feel very good about it. You know, it was, eh, you know, but I realized it was terrible. I said, oh, my God, that was horrible. What can I do? What can I do? And I thought about it and I realized, well, this is why I joined the course. I joined the course because I can't do public speaking, because I'm terrible and I'm terrified. I'm afraid to do it. That's why I'm here. So, of course, my first time was bad. And I decided to go all in, all in with the course. I decided I was going to give all of my energy, all of my enthusiasm during the course, that I was going to give all of my effort, do everything they asked me to do, do all of the activities, all of the reading, all of the practice at home, and do it exactly how they said to do it. I was going to follow the instructors exactly and to do it with 100% enthusiasm. And enthusiasm is kind of like Happy excitement, happy excitement. 
So I decided I'm just going to do this with happy excitement. So my skill is terrible. I have no skill for this. I'm kind of shy naturally, but I do have enthusiasm. I do have excited energy. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it all into this course every week. And so at the end of the first class, we had homework. We had to choose a topic and practice to do our first real speech the next week, the next class. And so, you know, I chose my topic and I practiced. I practiced exactly how they taught us. I used their method exactly. And every day I practiced exactly how they said. And I did it with, again, full enthusiasm, full energy, no hesitation, no worry, nothing. Just, yes, I'm just 100%. I'm going to do exactly what they say. And I practiced and I practiced and I practiced and all my excitement and energy and enthusiasm I used. And the next week, came to class again and again, you know, one by one, every student had to come to the front of the class and give a speech. And of course, you know, as you're waiting, it's terrible because you get more and more nervous, right? In many ways, the first person is the luckiest. They go up, they do their speech, it's finished. The rest of the class, they can relax. But if you're the last person, it's the worst because you're just waiting, waiting, waiting. And every speech, you get more nervous as you wait and wait and wait. And I was not at the beginning. So I waited and I waited and I waited and I waited. And then finally, my time came and I was, again, super nervous. And they called me again. I, when I came up onto the stage, again, I was shaking, right? Shaking hands and again, the voice and the, the weird voice and the, the tight neck and all that kind of stuff. All the same problems as the week before. But there was one difference, one difference. And that is I put all of my energy into my speech. I just, ah, all of my excitement. So I was, I was walking around the stage and I was... Uh, just using my force to speak with a very loud voice and to move my arms and move my hands. And honestly, it was, pro it was too much. It was probably crazy. It probably looked kind of crazy because I was ah, rah, rah, just, just going crazy with all of my excitement and enthusiasm for that speech. But, but I did it. I did it. Number one, I forgot about the fear because I was using so much enthusiasm and energy that I couldn't really think. In fact, the, the speech seemed to go very fast, very fast. Like, it's like I, I suddenly it was finished. Everyone was clapping. And then I sat down and it, it seemed like it only took a few minutes. You know, it's weird. Like the time changes when you do these things, right? Sometimes it feels really, really, really long. And other times it can seem like just it's finished in just a few seconds. So I sat down and at the end of the class in Dale Carnegie, they, they vote, they give awards. So they'll give you an award for, you know, the best speech, for example, they give an award for the most improved. And that week, the first week I won an award and I won the award of most enthusiastic, most enthusiastic, not best. My speech was definitely not the best but most enthusiastic. And I was, I was like, yeah, great, good. And that encouraged me. That kind of uh, motivated me even more to be super enthusiastic during the course. So since I won that award after the first speech, I decided, well, I'm now I'm really going to give all of my energy and all of my enthusiasm every single week and do every single thing they tell me. I'm going to be Mr. Energy, Mr. Enthusiasm. And I was, and I was. And as a result, during that course, I think it was a 10-week course, I improved so much as a public speaker. My speeches got much, much better. Not super great, but, you know, I started very, very low. So by the end, much, much better. And every speech, I was super energetic. And again, probably too much, but, you know, I, I needed it. At that time, I needed to be too much. Too much enthusiasm is okay, okay? Too much enthusiasm is fine. When you become good and, and later, you can kind of calm down a little bit. But in the beginning, when you're afraid, when everything's difficult, when you're not sure, 
just use all of your enthusiasm. There's not enough, okay? Too much is okay. Too much enthusiasm is great. It gives you power. It gives you so much power and energy to succeed in anything. And so I learned that, you know, I learned a lot from that experience and I learned especially that, you know, enthusiasm was a kind of superpower to overcome difficult challenges and especially to overcome fear, fear and doubt. Success in life, in anything in life, it goes to the bold and the enthusiastic. Those are the people who succeed in life at anything, at business, learning English, sports, anything else. The bold and the enthusiastic, right? The people who are happily excited about things and have a huge amount of energy for something, they succeed. The people who overcome fear and just go forward with 100% energy, no hesitation, no doubt, they succeed. They get the biggest success. The bold and the enthusiastic succeed, not the timid. The timid are the ones who are, uh, they, they let their fear become the master. And they're kind of a little afraid and they hold back. Not the doubtful, right? The doubtful are always the ones, well, I'm not sure. And maybe, and I don't, I don't know if I really want to do this. And um, they, doubt, 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 right? Always doubting everything. They're not the ones who succeed in life. Not the critics, the ones who are always criticizing, criticizing, criticizing everybody else. They're failures. They fail in life. Those are not the succeeders. Those are not the, the, the great successes. It's the bold and the enthusiastic that succeed. And so, as you look at your English learning, or maybe you want to start your own business, maybe you have this dream, start your own business, or become a freelancer, or travel the world, or whatever it is, you have some dreams, some, some great ideas. To achieve those, you must let go. You have to put all of your emotion, all all of your enthusiasm into that. Like, why don't people do this? Why? I think people, too many people are worried about what other people think, other people looking at them. And so a lot of people, I noticed this, that they, they want to be cool. I want to be cool. They want people to see them as cool. Which I, I hate this word now because this word cool really is just an excuse. Cool usually means afraid. That's what I've noticed now after many years of living, that most people who are focused on being cool, really, they're just cowards. They're afraid. They're afraid. They're afraid to take a chance. They're afraid to look foolish. And see, that's why people are afraid to be 100% enthusiastic. They're afraid they'll look foolish if they're, ah, if they're super excited and yeah, ah, and they're just trying hard and putting all of their emotion, all of their excitement into something. They're afraid other people will, oh, you're foolish and think and criticize them and laugh at them. Maybe they will. Who cares? Who cares? They're losers. People, the, the, the successful business people are super enthusiastic about their business, okay? They don't care about being cool or looking cool. They pour, they put all of their energy and excitement into that business every single day. And they grow it and they grow it and they grow it and they grow it. And that's how they succeed. And they don't care if they look cool or not. The people who want to look cool... They fail. They don't start their business or they start their business, but they're afraid to put all that energy in. They're afraid to show their enthusiasm. They're afraid to show their emotion. And so they never really succeed. Those are the people who often fail. So you have a choice. You know, if you want to succeed, you've got to have that enthusiasm. You've got to show it or you can try to be cool. But it's a choice. You can be cool and fail, 
Or you can be enthusiastic and succeed and be happy and enjoy your life and have a great life. This is the choice. I recommend enthusiasm. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more enjoyable. Let the critics look cool. Let the doubters look cool. Let the fearful look cool. You be enthusiastic. This is why, by the way, enthusiasm is one of the, you know, official <laughs> values of the Effortless English family. The Effortless English family has a code, a mission, and values. This is what makes our community, our international community, different and special. And it's what makes them so positive, what's make, what makes them so friendly, so helpful, and what makes them so successful. And enthusiasm is one of those values. Very important. So I'm always looking for the most enthusiastic learners. I don't care if your English is the best, because I know you can improve. I do care if you're enthusiastic. I want enthusiastic learners. And you can see it. You can go on my Twitter. You can see it every single day. The enthusiasm of everybody who's sending me messages and the Effortless English family, how enthusiastic they are, how positive and excited they are about learning and improving their English and speaking. It's amazing. I love it. I love it. And that's why they're special. And that's why you are special. So here's what I'm telling you to do. With Effortless English, put all of your emotion in. Don't worry about what other people think or how you look. Go ahead, look foolish. Be too enthusiastic. I was. When I was giving my speeches, I was too enthusiastic. I'm sure I looked a little foolish. I was jumping around too much on the stage. I was going quite crazy. It was probably too much, but I, I didn't care. And because of that, I got much better. I improved so much more. So it's the same for you with English. Just be super enthusiastic. Look foolish. It doesn't matter. You're going to have a big success. And with other big dreams you have, maybe, maybe you want to, you know, maybe you're a young man and you want to ask a girl on a date or ask several girls on dates. Be enthusiastic. Put your energy into it. Stop trying to be cool all the time. And if you want to be free financially, an investor, start your own business, an entrepreneur, a freelancer, you must do this. You must do this. Put it all in. 100% all of your energy every single day. Pour that enthusiasm into your life. You will create an amazing life. You will have great successes. All right, I'm live on YouTube right now, so I'm going to go to the questions, answer a few questions live. We got people commenting. People comment while I talk, but I can't read while I'm talking, guys, so be patient. During the show, I answer questions at the end of the show, not the beginning. All right, let's take a look at our questions and comments. <laughs> All right, here's a question um, from Jitumani. How do you remain energetic and enthusiastic all the time? Do you not have any domestic problems? <laughs> so basically, don't you have any problems in your life? Of course I have problems in my life. You don't need to be energetic all the time in your life. Just, just when you're doing what you need to do for your goal right? I'm super enthusiastic when I'm doing effortless English. Okay, this is, this is my life. This is my profession. This is my career. This is my business. This is my community. So I put all my energy and enthusiasm into it, this. But other times in the day, I go for a walk. If I go for a walk, I just relax. I'm sitting at home with my family. Well, I just, then I just relax. Right. So it's not like you don't have to you don't have to be, you know, from the moment you wake up until you go to bed ah, crazy all the time. But you need to be crazy and positive and energetic when you're focused on those big, important things in your life. Starting that business, speaking English fluently, 
asking a girl on the date, whatever it is, then you need to do that. That's when you do it. So it's about using your energy correctly. And when when something's important, you put all that enthusiasm in 100%. You pour it in. And then, of course, other times in your life, you relax. That's called having balance. And this is also true. So I'm going to the next comment from uh, Mohammed. Enthusiasm will come become your daily habit. So if you're regular study, you, you won't fail. Yeah, that's right. This y It will become a habit. It will become something you do more effortlessly without so much effort. It'll just be more natural feeling. So again, like with my story, I had to really try hard when I was first learning to do public speaking. You know, I had to... I was I had to think about it before my speeches and when I was practicing I had to 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 f really almost force myself to do this. However, each week it got easier, right? Easier and easier and easier and easier and since then I've also done more public speeches and now it's it's basically automatic when I get up and I speak to a group, I'm automatically enthusiastic. I'm automatically energized. I'm not really trying anymore. I don't have to try hard. It's, it, it is a habit with public speaking, right? When I'm talking to you, right? I'm usually enthusiastic. I don't have to try hard to do this anymore with you because I'm, I feel it automatically. It's there. I just let it come out. So in the beginning with some things, yes, you might need to push yourself for a while, but it does become a habit. So a very good comment. Thank you, Muhammad. Okay, well, uh huh. So Mustafa says, when I have a presentation, I suddenly start shaking inside my body. Yes, exactly. Me too. Not so much now, but in the past I did. And the sound in my voice also starts to shake. Yes. It's not that I'm scared. Ah, I just feel overwhelmed by the energy around and inside. Yes. Also normal. It's okay. It still happens to me sometimes. It still happens to me sometimes uh, where I'll, I'll be shake. I'll, my hands will shake a little before a speech. And it's exactly what Mustafa's saying. It's not really so much fear now, but it is. It's adrenaline is what it is. Okay, adrenaline is that chemical in your body, when you get uh, excited or fearful, your, your body releases this chemical adrenaline and it causes your heart to beat faster and it can cause your hands to shake. It can. And your voice to change. These things, they're all physical changes that are happening. So you can learn to use the adrenaline. So instead of Instead of it destroying you <laughs> and making you a bad speaker, you can use that adrenaline for energy to be a more energetic speaker. You just have to learn to control it a little bit. Okay. Do you have Instagram? An Instagram question again. Yes, I do. Put it on the screen right now for those watching. For those listening, it, my Instagram is Effortless English Club. Effortless English Club is my official Instagram. I put little short videos on Instagram. I take pictures, of course, on Instagram. Sometimes I'll do a surprise live video on Instagram. So my official Instagram, Effortless English Club. Follow me on Instagram. All right. Hmm. Just looking through the comments here. Good morning to all. Lots of people saying hello. Hope you're doing well. I have a question. All right, this is a, a question about money. That was Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel Esposito again. Okay, so this is a, an interesting question. Um, 
Hey, my dear master, hope you're doing well. I have a question. I got, I've got a question. My brother recently asked me whether I want to join in his company as his team member, or is it better to be self-reliant and independent? Well, that's a tough decision you have. Um, neither is better, I would say, or worse. So, it, you know, this kind of question, is, it's... It's, a, it's an opinion question. So it really means, is it better for you? Some people prefer to be more of like a team member, uh, not be the boss, not be the entrepreneur. It can be difficult being an entrepreneur. You have to make all the decisions. You're the boss of everything. You're responsible for everything. Uh, some people love that and some people don't. So... I can't give you the answer because uh, it really depends on what you want. I mean, do you dream of having your own business and being independent? And that's what excites you, what you're enthusiastic about? Then that's what you should do. On the other hand, if you think this sounds like a, a good opportunity and you you like your brother, you can get, not just like your brother, but you think you can work with your brother. Sometimes we like or love our friends or family, but... We can't really work with them, <laughs> right? Because we'll argue all the time. So you have to, do you have a good relationship with your brother where you could actually work together? That That's important. Do you have good communication with your brother? Um, here's the other thing about these kind of questions. Because I get these kind of questions a lot. And, you know, many times I can't give you, a, a, I can't tell you what to do because you have to make the decision. But I can tell, like, some people get, they're frozen, like ah, they can't move because they've got these two choices and, you know, maybe both of them look good and they're not sure, should I do this one or this one, this one or this one? And a lot of times the problem is in your mind, you think that you can only do one. You're afraid. Well, if I do this one, then the other one's not possible. But, but what you don't realize is you can change your mind later. Okay, you can always change your mind later. Most of these kinds of decisions are not permanent. So you could, for example, take a job with your brother, work with him, see what it's like, just try it, see what it's like. How do you work together? Do you enjoy it? Maybe you learn something from the experience. And then after a while, if you don't like it, you can quit. Just talk to your brother, sorry, this is not working. Or maybe you do like it, but you still later decide, I wanna start my own company. And so you could still do that later, right? Not, not, it, this won't stop you. So that's another thing. I think a, a lot of times we get stuck in our mind and we, 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 we're worried about decisions and you, you don't realize that these, most of these decisions are not permanent. So you can always change your mind later. So just make a decision quickly and do something. It's better to take action, right? Think of these as experiments You're just or tests. You're just testing it. You're just trying something. Okay, it's not, it doesn't mean you have to do it your whole life forever and you're stuck and you can't escape. No, 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 no. That's not how entrepreneurs think, right? Everything's a test. You, everything's just a test. You're just trying it and you see what happens. And if it's good, then you keep going. And if it's not good, you try something different. And if you do this, you, you lose a lot of your fear because you realize, well, it doesn't matter doesn't matter. I can, I'll just try one. Just pick one, try it, see what happens, and then make a decision again. So, Emmanuel, I would just say just, just you know, either one, whichever you want to do. But I'd say make a fast decision. You can just flip a coin if you want to. If you, if you like, just quickly think, oh, it'd be fun to work with my brother. Why not? I'll try it. Just try it. Just try it for a while. And you can change your mind later if you want to. Alrighty, common question I get all the time about English. How can I improve or learn more vocabulary? Reading is really the best way. In terms of just getting more words and understanding more words, uh, really reading is the best. Reading books, you know, fairly easy books, meaning books you can understand. You don't have to use a dictionary for every word. So reading, reading, reading is the best way to build vocabulary. I recommend that you also do audiobooks. Book plus audiobook is the best. It's a power combination. 
The audiobook, of course, helps your listening. The audiobook teaches you how to pronounce the words correctly, the new vocabulary. So you get the real pronunciation. And reading, you can do slowly. When you're reading with your eyes, the text, uh, you can go slowly. You can use a dictionary sometimes. So it's a good combination, reading and audiobook together. That is how you improve your vocabulary the best. Um, okay, this is an interesting kind of funny question, uh, comment, but I'm going to talk about it because it's another good point. Uh, AJ, I just can't be enthusiastic in the morning. You don't have to be. It's kind of like I was saying before. If you're not enthusiastic in the morning, then make your s schedule so you don't need to do important things in the morning. I'm also not very enthusiastic in the early morning. So guess what? Right now it's night. I'm a night person. I'm recording this at night. My energy's higher at night usually. So nights and afternoons is when I'm the best, when I have the most energy. In the mornings, generally, I like to go very slowly, very calm. So I change my schedule. I make my schedule so that my mornings are slow and calm and that most of my focused work happens in the afternoon or the evening. So that's all. Like I said, it doesn't have to be... You know, I understand these questions because um, I'll give you an example. There's, there's a, you guys probably know, you may know this guy, Tony Robbins. He's a famous speaker, Tony Robbins. And if you watch Tony Robbins, you watch his videos, you watch his speeches, it seems like, it seems like he is energetic and enthusiastic all day, every single day. You know, and he, like he only sleeps something like five hours a day, some small amount. And then the rest of the time, it seems like he's just, yeah, crazy energy all the time, all the time. Maybe he is. I don't know that, it, you know, when he talks and tells his stories, that's what it sounds like. So I used to watch him and I would think the same thing, like, God, I can't do that. That's not me. I, I, that, that doesn't, that's not even enjoyable for me. That's, that's actually kind of unhappy for me I, to, to be doing that all the time. I don't know. I grew up in the South, the Southern part of the United States. And in the South, the culture is kind of slow. Everybody, you know, take your time. No need to hurry about everything. Not necessary to hurry. Go slow. Take your time. I kind of like that. <laughs> okay. So I would start for a while. I would think, well, may, maybe I can't be an entrepreneur. Maybe I, I can't uh, do these things I want to do because I don't, I can't be like Tony Robb can't be like some of these guys who are just going, going, going 100% all the time, all day. But then I figured out that that's not necessary for most of us. It's not necessary. You need to do that, but you just a few hours a day is enough for most people. If you can just have a lot of energy and focus and enthusiasm for two or three hours per day, you can achieve big success. You can achieve those big dreams. You just have to use it wisely, you know, focus it on the most important things. If you're trying to build a business, you need to focus that on the business. If English is your number one thing, then you need to focus it on English and English learning. If it's relationships or family, then you need to focus that enthusiasm and energy on that during the day. So two to three hours of high energy per day is plenty. Most people have none. So you're going to win. You're going to be much better than most people just with two to three hours a day. So yeah, don't get scared by that. It doesn't need, I'm not that way. I'm not, you know, it's not every moment of every day. I'm not running around going crazy. Not at all. Okay, looking more questions. Some people talking about vocabulary. So again, read, reading, reading, reading in audiobooks. <laughs> well, this is a problem. Uh, you know, this is the follow-up question. How can I stop wanting to be cool? That's a little bit difficult question. How do you stop wanting something? The first step is to realize why you want to be cool. Because you're afraid. You are afraid. 
Wanting to be cool is really fear of being uncool, free, you know, this, this, this fear of looking foolish. So to stop wanting to be cool, you have to overcome the fear. That's the main thing. It's overcoming the fear. You've got to face the fear. You got to look at it and be honest that that's what's happening. Because nobody cares. Nobody else cares. You know, if you think you're trying to be cool, most people do not care. People care about themselves mostly. Strangers, you know, your family cares about you, hopefully. Your close, real friends care about you. Nobody else cares, right? Nobody else really cares. They care about their own lives. So it's overcoming that fear of, you know, I mean, like, who cares what people think on social media? It doesn't matter. Who are they? You don't even know them. No, you got to get past that. And you've got to decide. You know, the other way you overcome this is you decide what's more important to me, to be successful and happy or this stupid idea of being cool? Which one will give me the benefits I want, the life I want? Make a decision. That's it. Can you recommend a book about financial freedom? Well, as a matter of fact, I can because we are doing the Effortless English Book Club on this topic. Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. So join me Saturday for our next book club lesson, our book club show right here on YouTube on Saturday. I'll do it live again. Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Oh, someone's saying, please say fluently, confidently that Poland will win today. <laughs> All right, good luck. They're in our group, though. They're in Japan's group. Okay, I like this comment, so I'm going to read it. From Van Ron. I just regard university as bullshit. <laughs> Cheers to you. I agree. It's like school keeps you in a child mindset. Is there something I can do instead of going to university? I like that comment. Bullshit means nonsense, means foolishness, means unimportant, stupid stuff. So university is bullshit. And from, I agree. I agree. What can you do instead of going to university? Start your own business. Start a business. Or join another business and, and learn for a while. You know, learn real skills. Or um, you know, learn how to do computer programming. It, I don't know what your interests are, so I can't give you really specific stuff. But you know, in general, learn skills, you know, useful, practical skills, and learn about business. And then when you're ready, start a business of your own. That's the advice I would give. I mean, you, instead of wasting four years taking stupid classes, you could spend those same four years learning real skills, useful skills in life, and learning real business skills, and maybe starting a small business just to learn, mostly just to learn. Even if you fail, you're still going to learn so much. And then four years from now, you will have all this great experience, all these really useful skills in life, and the people from university will have none of that. You will have four years of real world experience. Your friends who went to university will not. You will have an advantage over them, big advantage over them. And then you could start another business or, you know, a real serious business and you'll have a much better chance of succeeding. So that's, that's kind of my general advice. But of course, you know, I don't know what you're interested in. So maybe you have other, some other things you're enthusiastic about. So I would say follow that enthusiasm. Get out in the real world and do things and learn real life skills and have real experiences and take risks and make connections with real people and do all of that. Spend four years doing that. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Great comment. I like it. All right, let's see, maybe one more here. Oh, lots, of com lots of comments and questions coming in. Okay. 
Okay, I, I'll mention about this because uh, this is a kind of a very linguistic type of question um, from Mora. Uh, can you make a video about English collocations? Probably not. I'll tell you why. I don't like this kind of teaching. I don't like this way of trying to learn. What's a collocation? A collocation it just means words that often appear together. They're usually together. They're commonly used together. That's fine to learn that, but but why don't I want to teach it? Because the way a lot of people teach that is just in a list, uh, just to like break in, break up, uh, and they, they give you two words or three three words, and just list and list and list of all these words or these phrases basically um, that are together, and you're just supposed to memorize them. Ugh, that's like memorizing vocabulary. That's like trying to memorize grammar rules. You're not going to remember it. You won't remember. So how do, you, how do you naturally learn what words go together from real content, from books, from audiobooks, from podcasts, from stories? Just learn it. Just let these things happen. It, it's something that's automatic, okay? No, no native speaker learns this kind of stuff, no, studies it, you know, from lists or something. You don't need to either. You're just going to naturally get it. You're going to get it from the phrases you see and stories and books and audiobooks and TV and movies and podcasts, everything. Just focus on that. Focus on real stuff that's, that's enjoyable, that's interesting, uh, that has some meaning, not just lists of words and phrases. Okay, then. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember my audiobook. My audiobook is free at EffortlessEnglish.com. EffortlessEnglish.com, my audiobook. Get it there. As always, lots of love to you. Thanks for joining me live. Audio listeners, thanks for listening. See you next time.